How's it going, Critter people? I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I've been suggested to take a look at Mr. Caesar Milan. Um, so this will be sure to get me a lot of hate people. <laughs> a lot of hate. Um, you know, people come in here telling me they don't know what I'm talking about. So that's fine. That'll be fun. Um, first things first, using all footage here under Fair Use Act for Education Criticism from my personal point of view, trying to give the dogs in the video a voice. So if you don't know who Caesar is, um, Caesar Milan is a an uneducated or self-taught um, dog trainer. You know he he got a bunch of TV shows, this and that. He's he uses outdated information and sources, talking and referring to animal uh, dogs as pack animals. You have to be pack leader. You have to be um, assertive and dominant and this and that. And that's just not true. Um, it is outdated, misquoted. So I will leave a link in the description below of a video I've covered, um, going more in depth as to why dogs are not pack animals. So. He says, uh, so this is apparently Jason Derulo. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know who that is. I imagine some kind of a sports person and Jenna Frooms. Um, and he says, my dog won't stop pulling on leash. So a lot of times, you know, he people like this who, with, you know, big backgrounds or, or when he wanted to start his YouTube and get really big, you, you, they work with a bunch of celebrities. So, you know, that's an easy way to get noticed is working with celebrities. So we start off here with a beautiful Belgian Malinois, um, you know, very high energy type dogs. Um, we got a fancy chain collar here. I don't like that. Um, you know, if you don't walk them on that, that's fine. You know, if it's a choke chain, that could be dangerous because it could, you know, choke the dog. Dog looks already stressed. We have long lips. We have, you know, ears are back. Um, long spatulate tongue. Um, I mean, very, very You know, he's just, dog. you know, in your face, very, very hyper. Well, the he's a Belgian Malinois. I mean, these dogs really need to have a job to do. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that the, you know, a regular civilian, can, you know, cannot own them, but it also means that not everybody should own them. I mean, I'm confident in my own um, experience in being able to train one, but I would not own one myself because I know that I could not give them the best life that you know life that they deserve. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, nearly as active as they would need me to be, um, you know, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they, they need to be like running 24 seven, you know, they can have lots of mental stimulation, but still they need lots of run time. And, and, you know, I just couldn't handle that. CERN is that hyper, uh, nature can turn into uh, a little bit of aggression, really. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So he's causing this because he has the dog on a very tight slip collar you know, he just got the leash and he turned it into a slip lead and he's causing this because one and oh my god i gotta stop this i gotta say this right now he is not a behaviorist he's committing fraud if he says that he's a behaviorist okay you have to have at least a master's degree it is fraudulent in america to say that you are a behaviorist when you are not that would be like calling you know psychology center that's all bs you know somebody could actually sue him if they wanted to for saying you know, if if he claims, hey, it's not psychology. Okay, you're you're not you're not educated. You're not anything. Again, it's like saying he's if he were to basically claim he's a psychologist, and you go to him, and he he tells you all this mumbo jumbo, you could sue him for malpractice. Same thing with the animals. If he calls himself a dog trainer, that's one thing. He could even call himself pack leader. All that fine. I mean, it's still you know, still ludicrous, but. This is not a psychology center. He is not a psychologist. He's not a behaviorist. Quick. So, uh, he causes this. He's just choking the dog. He's giving, you know, eye contact. He's all the and all the BS. It's just nonsense. And it's lies and it's manipulation. And if he believes he's helping dogs, that's fine. I don't care. The dogs don't care. And he's just lying to you if he calls himself any kind of a behaviorist. And it's not, this is anything but a psychology center. I mean, it's like you could say, you know, oh, yeah, we're sending, we're sending someone to a psychology center. It ends up being like, a, you know, a psych ward and they just end up beating you or putting you on drugs or, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, highly sedative medications. Hoping that Caesar can He's choking the dog out and he's flooding them. Everyone, they only work because they're on a slip lead, just like Dog Daddy. He's pretty much the same as Dog Daddy. Hey, I, dog daddy gets dog daddy is pretty much the same as him i should say plus Choke tame that energy um because i know he's not aggressive by nature i just think you know some kind some situations just rub him the wrong way good that's excellent this guy already has a great 
view of his dog. You just, you know, don't need to listen to this idiot Milan here. Because that's going to make your dog worse. Yeah, we have to learn how to, um, like, get the, get the trust and respect from them. Both of them. There you go. Thank you. You need to get the trust and respect from the dog. Well, I mean, I, I mean, respect the dog, not necessarily get their respect, but yeah, get their trust. And, and the way Caesar teaches it, you're not going to get that. You're going to lose all of that. He makes dogs worse. I mean, his own dog, Junior, attacked and mauled a young athlete and changed her life forever. It killed uh, Junior, was put down because he had attacked uh, Queen Latifah's dog. And, he, and Caesar tried to claim that the dog w got, got out and got hit by a car. He tried to sweep it under the rug. His dog, Junior, that he raised from a puppy, actually attacked and mauled a human that is very far and few between. That doesn't happen a lot. But the dog he raised from a puppy had to be court ordered to be put down because it attacked a human and disfigured her, uh, her, her leg, killed another dog that was there at, on his property to train, and he tries to you know, sweep it all under the rug. So what does that tell you about his methods? I mean, poor little Junior, but she... Because sometimes he'll be a follower of his behavior and we need them to both, you know, respect... I wonder if they have two million of us. ...and listen to us without us having to scream our lungs out. And so that's the problem, is that, that, that you've taught the dogs to only listen when you're screaming at them. Um, I tell a lot of times my, my clients that I like to teach a dog to listen to a whisper, you know, uh, it, it, so to speak, you know, as far as, like, very soft body language, very soft handling of the leash, you know, soft voice... Um, so that way, if you do need an emergency, you know, hey, hold, hold, stop it, you know, come back here, or, or whatever, when you do end up screaming just out of a natural, um, reaction, then your dog says, whoa, mom or dad really means it, what's going on, you know, as your, your emergency, uh, like, you know, oh shit move, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever word you say, but you should start soft and quiet. All that, so. Hey, that could be stressful, either. It is. For everyone, for everyone, Don't. absolutely. Come out, sit yeah. down. And we, we it's not comfortable to have to constantly be yelling at something. It's just like you're or someone, and your dogs feel the same way. So we're gonna get into. I know I'll be here forever if I listen to everything that Caesar says. So I'm just gonna try and get to where he's working with them. But we'll fast forward a little bit. So how do how do, like when we're taking him for a walk? How do I stop him from pulling me? So he has this dog on us on he took the the leash and he's just tight around the dog's neck because that's all he knows how to do is he's 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 just like anybody else they have one tool in their toolbox and his tool is a hammer or a slip lead and he used that with every single dog um you know if you if you only have one tool in your toolbox you know a hammer you're gonna see every problem is a nail um so he's talking about how do i keep him from pulling you know, there, it, a lot of people will see it as, as a pulling problem when it might be a whole number of other problems that you need to work on. Um, first of all, your dog's excitement, you know, level, their threshold. Um, do they need just to run for a little bit before you can start working on loose leash? Um, are they comfortable in their environment? Is it the, the equipment you're using? Um, you know, I will put a video down in the description below of how I teach loose leash walking. Um, not at all like this. I would teach this dog on a harness just like I do any other dog. Clip it on the back. They start moving forward. I give them their leash. They start pulling. I'm going to stop and apply the lightest bit of pressure uh, to the right or the left side of them. So say if this dog is facing forward this way, um, you know, their nose is pointing towards this tree, um, then I would be behind them and now I take the leash and either start leaning my arm this way or this way just to get them to move sideways and kind of take them off balance one or two steps. And as soon as they give into that pressure, I let go. And then they might go right back to pulling. And we go right back and forth and back and forth. Um, and for some dogs, they need to get a little bit of running out. You know, they need to, especially Belgian Malinois, I would expect them to need to play a little bit of fetch or, um, you know, just do some swimming or some a little bit of running for, you know, a little bit. Get some of that piston vinegar out of them. You know, get some energy out. And then we can start training a little bit on slow walking, this and that. Um, and then we can let them, as a reward for going at a human's pace, which is far too slow, especially for a dog like this, not pulling, then we can let them go again, let them run again, and then practice a little bit more, and let them run and, and you know, practice that throughout the day. Um, and it's a process, not an event. 
I just showed a video of Zeus of how I work with a reactive dog and how him it was very difficult to get him out for walks around his neighborhood because he has a very busy neighborhood. Um, lots of kids and bikes and whatnot, and Zeus is reactive to everything. I mean everything. Birds, planes, uh, you know, a bicycle, a leaf going down the, the, the street, you know, so that was very difficult. Um, but that's how I would train. Uh, now we're going to see he's just going to use a slip leash and just choke the dog and that's it. How about the shoes? First of all, you have to understand, where is the leash more... So he's putting it, it's, it, this dog is already stressed, over threshold, you know, stress panting. Um, he has the, the leash, you know, the leather um, leash that the dog has and uses. He has it high around the dog's neck using a slip lead um, because it's more sensitive there. Around, you know, the base of the skull, there's a lot of nerve endings there. And it also, you know, kind of cuts off <laughs> their breathing, so they don't want to pull too much. You can get a lot more leverage on them there than you do down here or on a harness and the point is not to have leverage on them and cause pain effective for what i'm trying to accomplish mm -hmm. yeah so that means you have tools but you don't know how to use them which and he talks all this stupid nonsense that's just confusing dude he uses pain compliance that is it he uses a slip lead he causes the dog to become discomfort you know he causes discomfort to the dog possibly pain the dog stops pulling because it hurts you're going to have to rely on this always. The dog will, I mean, you can't put them in any other tool because they're going to have to rely on this. Most people just keep buying tools. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was American, we were like, do we need a muzzle? Tight, do we need a this? Tight, tight. American <laughs> is, and a American muzzle is great. If you don't feel safe, get a basket muzzle, condition your dog to a basket muzzle while you're training. That would be absolutely terrific. I mean, these people look, they already sound awesome. Um, they really do care about their dogs and their dog's well-being, and this is just not it. And he's just taking advantage of them, and he's getting more YouTube views because he's working with celebrities, because... I don't know. And then you go. He's, he's correcting this dog here constantly. It's just You don't see it a lot because he has leverage around the neck. All he needs is a wrist flick um, to stop the dog from pulling. The dog is choking, choking. It hurts. So now you're sitting down. He's the dog can't breathe properly. Alert, but not take. So that right there, picture is worth a thousand words. He pulled up. He snapped at the dog. That caused the dog to react more. <laughs> now he's choking the dog. This is why the dog is listening because it can't breathe properly. I got it, got it. He's choking the dog. So he's flooding the dog now, just like this one. This dog doesn't trust him. Tiny slip lead around this big dog's neck look at how muscular it is i mean this is a be both dogs are beautiful very healthy looking dogs so he's forcing him close he can't breathe this dog doesn't trust him i don't blame you dude i wouldn't trust him with any dog choking, choking, can't breathe choking jesus that's all he's doing oh my gosh this guy is so cute I mean, I love pointy-eared dogs. Like, that's just a given for me that this guy is adorable. But this little guy is so cute, too. Oh, my goodness. So he's literally just doing what, what Dog Daddy does is just choke. So I'm going to mute this, actually. We don't need to hear. If you want to see how a person trains, um, just mute the video. And you can, you're can you not listening to the mumbo-jumbo they say. You're just, he's talking about energy, blah, blah, blah. It's not energy. It's just you're choking the dog, and the dog cannot get to where he wants to. You're not changing his state of mind. You're simply telling him that when he's off leash, he will still go after this dog. Um, now, if he does, and he gets in, you know, into a fight, that's one thing. Uh, but he may not if he's off leash. A lot of times dogs will be more reactive on leash because they feel this tension and it hurts or it causes more frustration in them. That's why it's called leash reactivity or barrier reactivity if you're um, you know, behind a fence. Um, but it, it, a lot of times if they run up to the other dog when they're off leash and they realize, oh, wait, I actually don't want to fight. So we're going to unmute it. Pushes him down. Again, he's just choking this dog. That's all he's doing. Oh my goodness, he's so cute. I like that he has a nice, long, healthy muzzle. Um, you know, a, a lot of these, um, I don't know if he's like the South African Borbol, is that the, the name of the breed? Um, South African Mastiff, I don't know. He looks like kind of a Mastiff um, sort, but I like that he has a, 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 you know, longer snout, not like squished up like, you know, 
I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, I like that because it seems um, healthier for the dog that they can breathe. So right now I'm reintroducing him to be around dogs as he's on the leash. He's not learning anything. He's just making him, he's basically in a straight jacket. Uh, you know, you put someone in a straight jacket and, and try to push them towards their, their, you know, their greatest fear. And whenever they react, someone just starts choking you. An actual behaviorist, an actual dog psychologist, not him, uh, would never do this. They wouldn't ever recommend this. <laughs> they would never have this on this dog. They wouldn't have you even you know, meeting a dog yet. They would keep your safety and, of course, the dog's safety and everyone's safety in mind above their own ego or, or nonsense beliefs. Because what you said earlier is when he's on the leash, he launches them. Well, yes, because a lot of dogs do that. When they're reactive, the leash and the tension and the pressure of the leash causes the dog to become reactive. If I were to be working with this, I'd be working at a distance and have the dog on a harness. And once we work on loose leash, you know, where he can be on a loose leash, then we work on, you know, we work on a lot of other behaviors. And then we work on uh, meeting another dog where we can see the dog at whatever distance it is where this dog can sit down comfortably um, and, and look at me and give me cues on his own where he can look at, at or the owner, really. Um, I would train the, you know, the dog to look at the owner. A lot of times I don't take the dog and walk them. Um, I'll do a short demo, but then I have the owner do it. And as soon as the dog looks, then I, I would start marking and teaching the owner what to look for and when to, you know, reward. Um, and as soon as the dog is able to do that, when we slowly get a little bit closer, and just like I did with Zeus, you know, we get a little bit closer. If they start reacting, then we back up again. We increase distance. Right, so what yes, do you know? it takes time. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm not a five-minute trainer. This is just dangerous. This dog is not going to get any better. He is going, if he hasn't already bitten someone, or a dog, or start another fight, otherwise you're just going to be choking this dog. Also about the leash is to react to dogs. Yeah, so that's why you see right now the, the transition of going high and then coming down. You just can't get there because you have him on such a short leash and it's so tight when he tries to, he chokes himself and he can't breathe. He's a smart dog for not continually trying to just run to the end of the leash. High and then coming down. So him staying here, He's not listening to the dog anymore, he's listening to the handler. No, he's not. He's looking at his dad and he's ignoring you. And he's saying, as soon as this guy lets go, I'm going to run to my dad, my mom and dad, because I trust them. He's not listening to any handler. So the handler can influence with the leash. Choke the dog and cause pain. That's it. That's all you're doing. Uh, the way you have it is the environment influence him. You just hold the leash. Yeah, exactly. So try in a different environment. You don't need to do anything with, with this dog, with the leash. You need to prepare him in different environments. So if you have to start in just your own driveway and let him just walk around at the end of his six-foot leash, you know, holding on to it, of course, as long as he's nice and soft and loose, and reward him for checking in with you, um, you know, or if he starts barking, you can go inside the garage, close the door, and, you know, come back out whenever he's quiet and let him stay out there as long as he wants, as long as he's quiet or reward him. Fine, and then you can start going down the block a little bit. You know, go down to uh, the next house down, and then come back, and then two houses down. You know, I explained that in the video of where uh, my last video of where I was talking about Zeus. Even if you said the name, even if you say the command, he can't hear you. The mind has already made a decision. Because he's over threshold. It's not that the mind has made a decision. He just can't hear you because he's over threshold. So increase distance from whatever the trigger is. And then to, uh, to where he can hear you and he's able to pay attention and that's where you start and you work there for in my opinion several days um, or several sessions until the dog is able to really comfortably be able to, to sit in that environment on their own they can lay down in that environment they can take a nap because they're so comfortable in that environment um, and at that distance and then you can move a little bit closer and, and training is a process not an event like he tries to make it that's why a lot of people will end up failing or their dogs still end up reactive after working with him because he doesn't actually help them. So I'm making a decision before he makes a decision. No, you're just correcting him. You're choking him. You're not even making a decision before he makes a decision. You're just choking him as he uh, preventing him and holding him back from getting to the other dog. That's it. Right, so right now what I'm saying is follow me. 
You're not saying follow me. You're saying correction, correction. The dog isn't going to learn to follow you. He doesn't care. I mean, you may be saying follow you, but the dog doesn't hear that. The dog doesn't see that. The dog doesn't care. And then I, and then what I'm saying is we're going to pass by. He doesn't care. He's not listening to you. He's still trying to get to this dog. The only reason he, he can't is because you're choking him. See, he doesn't think of following you. And then when I... And that, that sit, it was automatic because he pulled. Look, he's still looking at this dog. I'm saying is we're going to sit next to her. her. So now he said, okay, so Caesar is controlling what my mind is doing. No, he doesn't. He doesn't think that at all. He's not even paying attention to you. He's only here because you have him tied to you on a two-inch slack of leash. He would be by his mom and dad if he weren't tied to you. He might come sniff this dog, but his eyes and attention is on his mom and dad. It's not on you. D just don't even try to fool yourself. So again, let's mute it again because we don't need to listen to this nonsense, uh, just baloney that he's spewing. So now he's walking both dogs together, again choking, you know, still choking this dog, tight, still pulling on lead, didn't teach this dog anything. So now he's going to teach you, again, using one of his own slip leads, because apparently the other one wasn't enough, so he can tie this dog to a treadmill, like we saw, it's so funny, I just covered a, a video on Facebook I saw a long time ago talking about this exact thing. Um, I don't know if that'll be up before or after this, but you can see that and what I think of that. I think it's very dangerous. <sighs> what the coaches don't don't give up in weaknesses. And they don't uh, talking about weakness and nonsense and blah blah blah. The dog doesn't see not you know weakness and any of that. He's just nervous. You know, nervous yawn, whale eyes, he's looking at mom and dad, very, very nervous and very stressed. So he's going to tie him to a treadmill to tire his ass out because he's going to have him run, you know, high slip lead. This dog is so stressed. Has this dog had some water? Does he have any water available? Gonna, let's see how he gets him on here. I want to see if he forces him on or if he walks on naturally. So the dog didn't do too bad. He actually kind of walked up. Still very nervous. Even though his tail's wagging, that's a nervous tail wag. You know, he, he, he could be kind of happy, you know, but he could be happy because he's looking at mom and dad. You know, he turns on and he wants to get out, but he can't because he's choking him. I don't, I don't agree with this. His little buddy is helping ouch choke, ouch choke. Oh yeah, let's tie him to this now. Force him. This is so dangerous. You're teaching your dog to be loud on the leash just like he is where you have loud hands I'm, he has his own type of of course he has his own type of own brand of dog treadmill just oh god it's so stupid oh. so although he he looks like he has quiet hands he really doesn't he's teaching the dog to to ignore lots of pressure and require lots of pressure around their neck Versus being able to, I mean, I can walk a dog in a harness on the back at the end of their six foot leash on a finger when you do it right. It's not because I'm special. It's because I take the time and I understand how dogs work and I don't force them to follow my stupid human ideology. I work for the dog. I don't just tie a dog up, never tie a dog up on a slip lead. It's a noose. You're going to choke your dog. Your dog cannot tell you when they want to get off because he tried to there. He tried to stop, but then it started choking him. I mean, this can go so wrong. He's shaking his head. Dog can't stop when he wants to. We don't know how long it's going to go. This poor thing. I don't care how slow it goes. This dog cannot tell you when he's too he's tired. He's telling you now. He says, Mom, Dad, get me out. Oh, lovely. Now we're going to put weight on him. As we, we, we tie him to this, this treadmill, as we keep it going, this is just flooding. Now, look, I have no problem with with you know, teaching a dog to have like a little weighted vest, you know, depending on the, uh, the outdoor temperature. Okay. Um, I think, I think that could be very helpful, uh, for some dogs, you know, give them a little bit of extra weight, you know, so a little bit of weight, you know, but don't tie them to a treadmill. You know, if they're going to be, you know, walking a little extra weight can give them a little, um, you know, tire them out a little bit more, give them more of a, a, a job to do, or, or, you know, take a little bit more energy out of them. But I wouldn't, this is kind of like a compound, compound, I don't know, 
you're adding too much to this issue. This alone is not going to help your dog. If you have a really hyper dog, weight can help you know, because they're, they're working twice as hard to walk. But if you're just going on a little hike, you know, again, make sure you give them plenty of times to rest. Don't leave this on the whole time. You know, go for little short bits. Um, but I would first work on loose leash walking, you know, and then you can add, if you want to add a little weight, you know, maybe, I mean, at your own discretion. Um, but just always keep in mind your animal's comfort and put yourself in your dog's shoes. And don't do this. I, I mean, I, you can do whatever you want, but I don't recommend it. This is just so dangerous. This dog is just so over it, super stressed. He's trying to get out of it, but he can't. Now he has weight, he's tired, he's flooded, he's choking. Ouch. Oh, lovely, now we're gonna speed it up and he's gonna choke him more. Lovely, because it wasn't enough earlier. How long has he been doing this? This poor thing is so tired. He's trying to get off, but he's choking him. He can't even stop. She looks worried. And, you know, I'm glad if she is. She doesn't look comfortable. And I hope they don't do this. She does not look comfortable with her dog being here like this. I mean, he's going to tell him, look, there's, there's, there's results. You know, so they're, they're, they don't want to feel stupid. And they're going to say, yeah, yeah, there's results. You know, this is just so unnecessary. All right, so he didn't really help with anything. But that's that. That's that for this video. Um, just nonsense. I think he's just, you know, like everybody, an idiot. He's just a liar. He's not a psychologist. He's not a behaviorist. He's not anything. He's just a guy who uses outdated methods to choke dogs um, and floods them, and that's it. And he works with a lot of celebrities. That's it. So... That's my video. I'm, I'm preparing for all the, the hate people and all the, the hate mail to be coming, flooding in for all the people who want to, um, you know, protect Caesar and this and that and this and that. Okay. For everybody else, thank you for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video. Um, hope you enjoyed. You know, hope you were able to learn something. Um, you don't need to pay anybody thousands of dollars to do what this guy is doing. He's, he's no better than Dog Daddy because Dog Daddy follows him. Um, so anyway, go give your little critters some kind of loving. Hopefully... You know, you don't do any of this. But give them some good loving that they appreciate. Say hi for me. And until next time, stay positive.